Planning Commission meeting of the Charter Township of Oxford to order. And if we would all rise and uh, pay our respects to the flag, please. I pledge, I pledge allegiance, allegiance to, to the flag, flag of, of the United, United States, States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. If the secretary would note the roll, please. Noted. We, and we have two abs. Two abs. Mike and Mike, okay. Uh, I'd like for a motion to approve the agenda. I make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Second. Uh, the motion was made by uh, John, uh, Mr. Knopf, or Nold, I mean, excuse me, and seconded by Mr. Curtis. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 I'd like uh, a motion for the approval of the minutes of the regular meeting of April 11, 2019. So moved. Support. Motion made by Mr. Curtis and uh, supported by Mr. Hunwick. All those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, is there anyone here from the public that would like to speak on anything tonight that's not on our regular agenda? Okay, and seeing none, we'll slide. Is there any commissioner's comments this evening? I want to start with you, Jack, on your end? Sure. Uh, last night we uh, we got the approval to uh, go to the village, get permission to run a sanitary sewer line through the village uh, during the M24 construction from Oakdale to Harriet Street. And why this is being done is any of the developments coming, um, Beaumont and such, are going to be required to put in lift stations to push it up to the north or the east and push it to the west so and uh, an opportunity came about and we've been working to get it to go and last night they approved the design money to do it and uh, we're going to go to the village on tuesday to uh, according to the state act we have to have their permission to run a sewer line through their village uh, secondly, last night we put um, the remainder of the Dunlap Levy property, which is known as Mickelson, we put the remainder of that in the sanitary uh, sewer and water district, um, and the 50 acre, approximately 50 acre piece of commercial property on the corner of Ray Road and M24 is now in the water and sewer district. Um, let's see what else, we did a lot of things last night. Uh, they, um, the board approved chloriding of all gravel roads in 2020 at no cost to the residents. Uh, and we approved road improvements to uh, West Davison Lake Road and to East Drainer Road. Uh, <laughs> it was a lot of work last night. That's a good one, though. Yeah, it is because yeah, that's that road's that's tore up. Bad. And so, who pays for all the gravel? Well, uh, oh, I'm sorry, we're not. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and and I'm, I'm just going to leave it at that right yeah. now. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, some of you may have heard, but uh, the text amendment uh, that we approved is going to come back to the uh, uh, Ordinance Review Subcommittee to uh, re review it with. Uh, some of the uh, people in the district. I'm going to go to Meg. Thank you. You got anything, Meg? I have nothing. Thank you. All right. John? I have nothing. Yeah, no comment. Uh, I have no comments after that last one I just heard. Um, Thank you. I'll move on to our first public hearing of the evening, which is uh, the purpose of this is to receive public comment for the proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance of 67A Article 3, Section 2, which is our official zoning map. And I'm going to turn out, oh, well, public hearing. You're, are you going to start with us first, Lauren? Do we have to open it first? or We do have public to open it. First. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing uh, to discuss the uh, zoning ordinance uh, 67A Article 3, Section 2, official zoning map and I'll make that at 7.04 p.m. I'll second that. Motion made by Mr. Curtis, seconded by uh, Mr. Nold. 
All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we are now open. Um, are you, Lauren, are you going to start with us on that before we go to public comment then? Um, Presentation by the petitioners, you, correct? Right, but you just opened the public hearing, so you would want to clo let the public comment and then close it and then have okay. comments from Township Consultant. But uh, well, shouldn't we have, and that's why I was a little questioning something, shouldn't we have started with you as the petitioner? No, I the Planning Commission is, well, the ORC, I suppose, is the petitioner. Jack introduced it. We open the public hearing, okay. and then we close it, and then I'll... All right. I don't run these meetings normally, so I'm just questioning. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So is there anyone here from the public to comment on our proposed amendments to uh, the, zoning. the zoning map? Yeah. Just a comment. It seems illogical to me that you would Got to present with information you're you're going to change so the public can comment on it because we don't know what the me too. changes are that may impact us. So at this time, no, there would be no public comments because we don't know what the she amendments are. They were the posted mic. on the, the website. We, we can hear you, but we could have heard you better up here. Okay. So, Lauren, that's what I meant. Yeah. We don't make we don't make those con presentations. No, for it's uh, the uh, introduction to the public hearing uh, or to the... Um, to the amendment is in the agenda there which is um if you i mean certainly if you'd like me to make a to I, explain i would to appreciate you. it i think yeah. for the benefit of that we do have a couple of audience members here sure. yeah i think it would be a, a good effort to make that okay known. just so people know what we're actually doing with this amendment okay would you like to close the public hearing first I'll make a motion to close the public <laughs> hearing at 7.07 .07 p.m. I'll second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're going to start over. Okay. Uh, Lauren, would you please give us a brief Certainly. Uh, Certainly. presentation? Um, yeah, so uh, the first um, amendment that we have before you is the updating um, of the zoning map. Um, it is... Uh, combination of a correction of rather three corrections and um, updating the uh, I'm sorry two corrections and the updating of the parcel layer so two of the cor the two corrections are that um, there were two consent judgments um, issued in 1983 and in 1982 and they at one time were um, shown on the map um, however, sometime between when they were represented on the map and now, or a month ago, they were removed. Um, and sure. they, I don't believe that they were removed intentionally. Uh, they're still um, valid consent judgments on these two properties. So one of them is on Oakwood. The other one is on um, Stanton. And so the correction, the two corrections are to... Um, re-represent those to put those back onto the map where they go uh, the update is that the parcel layer that lays underneath the districts um, is provided to the township by the county it's updated updated and maintained by the county um, when lot splits and lot combinations come in and um, ever so often annually it's good to update that to, re to reflect those um, changes in lot lines so that parcel map was provided to us by the county, and we um, we put it on the map to update it to the most um, current property owner lines, parcel lines. Thank you. I, I, I understand it all. I just wanted to make sure that other people knew what we were talking about. Now we can open the public hearing. I guess I would like to have a motion for that. Okay. I'll make a motion to open the public hearing to uh, for the proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance 67A Article 3 Section 2 Official Zoning Map at 709. I'll second that. Motion made by Mr. Curtis, seconded by Mr. Nold. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, now our public uh, uh, testimony could be heard if you have any, if there's anyone from the audience that would wish to speak on this matter. Seeing none, I'd like to see a motion to close the public hearing. 
I'll close the public hearing at 7 10 p.m. And I'll second that. A uh, motion to close from Mr. Curtis, seconded by Mr. Nola. All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that public hearing is now closed. We have another public uh, hearing tonight, no. and for the purpose of that, oh, excuse me, we have to review the uh, comments from the township's consultants. Sorry. Which we just did. Yep. Which we just did. And review of correspondence, uh, commissioner's discussion. Is there any? Ed, I see both consent of judgments, consent judgments on the map. And I'm looking, trying to find all of the layering, but I don't see, recognize any that are wrong, so I don't have any. Are you talking about from the county or from on behalf of County what? and Okay. Us. Is there any other commission discussion? Do we need another motion? We need a motion to approve the Got amendments. Uh, Thank you, Susan. Based on the draft zoning ordinance map amendments received from the township planner and reflected in the minutes of this meeting, <clears throat> I move that the planning commission recommend to the township board approval of the following zoning ordinance amendments. Amendments to Article 3, Section 2, Township Zoning Map as amended. I'll second. A uh, motion made by Mr. Curtis, second by Mr. Nold to uh, approve these amendments as stated. Previously, all those in favor say aye. 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 Uh, so there's really no discussion on the motion then? No. Nope. Uh, now, does that mean that that's automatically going to be our vote of recommendation to the township board? Yes. Yep. Okay. So that public hearing is now closed, correct? Yes. Okay. We good? Yep. Thanks. I just I'm trying to follow the rules and on, on public hearings. I want to make sure I'm correct. Okay, now our next public hearing is going to be presented by our petitioner. Roll call vote. Oh, we need a roll call for the uh, for that motion, the last motion. Excuse me. Okay, the previous motion we just did a I call on. Could we have a roll call vote, uh, please? Curtis. Yes. Hunway. Yes. No. Yes. Nold? Yes. Berger? Yes. Motion passed. Okay, now we're passing that recommendation onto the township board. Okay, for the purpose of our next public hearing, Lauren, do you want to give us a, a presentation, please? Yep, absolutely. Uh, the Ordinance Review Subcommittee uh, uh, has been tasked by the township board to um, uh, uh, examine the uh, cafe and patio uh, provisions that we have in our ordinance um, for future developments um, as well as guidelines for uh, restaurants that exist this uh, amendment updates uh, the restaurant um, use uh, the definitions um, and touches a number of um, other sections um, including the district uses it provides a new uh, a new what do I have a, moment? Um, a new section for restaurant and out for restaurant outdoor cafes and patios and I think the clearest way for me to go through this is is to read some of the changes as um, that's okay. yeah and I'll just kind of follow sure. through on the screen as you read them down right. then right uh, so the first thing that uh, this amendment does is adds two new definitions under restaurant. Uh, definitions is section 2.2. Uh, that's outdoor cafe as number seven, an outdoor area adjoining a restaurant consisting of tables, chairs, plantings, and related decorations where the following is provided. Table service of food and or beverages, including the service of alcoholic beverages. And number eight, uh, the definition of an outdoor patio, which is an outdoor area adjoining a restaurant consisting of tables and chairs and which is limited to the size which is not greater than 20% of the gross floor area of the restaurant and does not include table service of food and or beverages, live music, amplified music, dancing, staged entertainment, or service of alcoholic beverages. Uh, these uh, new definitions also affect the intent of the districts in which they're permitted or provided as a special use. Those districts um, are found in section 3.4 uh, F, which is C1 local commercial, 
The local commercial districts are intended to provide a limited number of locations for clusters of retail stores and personal service establishments for the everyday convenience of the nearby residential neighborhoods. And let's see, that also provides the um, the permitted or special use in uh, uh, C1 local commercial. Uh, outdoor patio will now be included as a permitted use, subject to section 5.35, which will be the new section added. And um, section L of 3.5 as well, which adds an outdoor cafe um, as a special land use in the general commercial C2 district, also subject to section 5.35. 5.35 then reads, that the, it is the uh, titled Restaurant, Outdoor Cafes, and Patios. Uh, and it reads, Outdoor Cafe subject to special use conditions imposed by the Planning Commission in accordance with Article 4, Special Land Use, with the exception that no site plan will be required unless requested by the Planning Commission, and subject to the following requirements added on the date that they're added. Restaurant uses, uses may also include an outdoor patio subject to the requirements of this section and to administrative review by the building department, uh, including number one, seasonal use restrictions limited to April 1st through October 31st, number two, hours of operation, number three, sketch plan indicating location of tables, chairs, awnings, canopies, protective fencing, railings, planters, or other pedestrian barriers. Number four, compliance with the Michigan Liquor Control Commission requirements. Number five, compliance with the Township Noise re Regulations, Article 10, Section J of the Zoning Ordinance. And number six, other conditions as required by the Planning Commission, with the Planning Commission retaining the option of requiring a full site plan. And uh, basically the, the uh, important differentiation here between the patio and the, and the general commercial is that local commercial is a um, less intense commercial district um, and the committee um, and myself advising as the planner found that a patio similar to uh, Frosty Boy that provides pat or chairs, tables, an area for someone to consume food that was bought maybe at a nearby restaurant or store or, um, uh, could consume it there and then C2 as a general commercial district a, a more um, intense district um, being where the cafe where an outdoor cafe that's connected to a restaurant providing food and um, beverage on the patio on premise uh, would be allowed as a special use but I, th I think the key ingredient to point out too though is it has to come to the Planning Commission right. under that special use for approval right. uh, and have a public hearing in regards to all that at that time too so then that's public input to have that outdoor situation occur we were critical on noting that when we put that together. I think that's important for the residents to know that. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, is there? A I'll make a motion to open the public hearing to receive public comments on the proposed amendments to the zoning ordinance 67A to add regulations to restaurant use definition categories, special land use regulations, <clears throat> and edits C1 local commercial intent of district provisions as shown in article 2 section 2 definitions article 3 section 4 intent of districts article 3 section 5.k schedule of re use regulations c1 local commercial article 3 section 5l 5.l schedule use of regulations c2 general commercial article 5 use regulations add section 35 restaurant owner cafes at 719 I'll second that lengthy motion I'm supposed to read it all aren't you okay I've, I've got a, a motion by Jack to open the public hearing in regards to what he just uh, stipulated and uh, seconded by mr. Knowles all those in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. okay the now we can uh, have public testimony if anyone is here to speak in regards to that. 
Good evening. Mary Ann Keynes, a resident of the Stony Lake Village condos in the Waterstone community. And my intent to come this evening was to educate myself as to what exactly the changes you were proposing to um, what was stated in the agenda. So I appreciate the conversation. Um, I was glad to hear, um, Acting Chairperson Mr. Berger, that you um, would hold a public hearing prior to any approval of an outdoor cafe so that any residents that might be impacted would be able to speak. So I, I was I applaud you for that. There were three concerns that I had looked at in regards to this, and you've addressed a couple of them this evening already. It was just the noise, how it would impact the noise ordinance, because as you know, our community um, is being impacted already by an existing outdoor cafe. And when many folks go out to the parking lot and uh, unlock their vehicles, you'd be amazed at how, um, because we have a lake which is a conduit of sound, the amount of noise that we hear from outdoor conversations and from cars being opened and closed and locked and whatnot. So I would look at the noise uh, ordinance impact. And then also you had mentioned about the barrier safety for folks if it's um, being located in an, a parking area that it would have some type of landscaping or physical barriers around it to protect the patrons and those uh, passers-by. But the third concern um, I didn't hear addressed, and that's the waste management issue. Again, we're being impacted where there was an agreement about where um, waste receptacles would be placed, that it would be in a corralled area so that animals and, and other folks could not, you know, impede um, going into the garbage receptacles, and that's currently not being adhered to. So that's always my concern is, depending on the size of what the outdoor patio cafe, how many patrons might be utilizing it, is that what would their waste management impact be in their signature of that? Um, when I tried to prepare myself for this evening, I tried to look what the proposed changes were and what the considerations were, but I didn't find it on the township website. So I know that you don't really interact with those of us this evening asking questions, but I didn't know where I might be able to look. Now I see it in red. Where could I have found that to prepare for this evening so I would be a little more educated to come before you and to know what to expect? But given that, those are, um, you again, you mentioned about the hours of of operation and the noise and the barriers and and um, those would were, were the concerns that I also had in regards to this evening's discussion about this item. Uh, we you. don't generally do cross conversation during this part of the, part of the meeting, but I would hope to think please come to the office next time and ask for that because we all have that. You can have a hard. Yeah, copy. I'm going to give you my copy. Oh, if you'd like to thank you. I will. I time. will take that. Thank you. Thank you. Because that's that's important for people to know what we're trying to accomplish. I don't. Yes, there's always there's always a packet available in the clerk's office for any meeting. So anytime when you see an agenda posted, there's a corresponding packet that you could come into the office, you can look at it, you can ask for copies of whatever you want out of it. Yeah, I appreciate that. Sometimes it's just time constraint, you know, oh. constraints and mm -hmm. in, in, in dealing with. But I appreciate that because I did try to look on the website and didn't see it there. So, thank you. Is there anyone? else from the public here to speak in regards to that if not I guess I would I'll make a motion to close the public hearing for these text amendments on uh, at 723 I'll second that a motion made to close the public hearing by mr. Curtis and I'm supported by mr. Nold all those in favor say aye aye next would be comments from the townships consultants and staff if there is any Review of the correspondence. Is there any more review? Uh, commissioner's discussion. Is there any discussion from any of the commissioners? I have none. I was just curious how the dates were decided. April 1st to October 31st. Is that just an arbitrary six months? No, it's just a curiosity. We looked, yeah, sure. <laughs> um, we looked. Um, I brought to the committee a number of um, ordinances that exist. Um, in similar sized townships, in neighboring townships, um, and um, typically what we recommend is, is the season. That's actually um, even e even a little bit um, broader than what a number of communities it just, allow to I, get the most out of the patio if people are putting it in. There are patios, I guess not even patios, so I guess that would fall under a cafe where we see the igloos set out. That would mm -hmm. be a cafe, that wouldn't be a patio. Correct. Yeah, if there's food service the or beverage service. 
and the igloos are out in the winter months because I like to sit out on the yeah, their, their but that that beverage. tech oh, I'm interrupting sorry that's it that technically wouldn't be an approved um, structure for that purpose unless they came in and asked for that though I mean I don't know how other communities are handling it but there's been research um, from the code officials uh, group that most of the materials involved in the products that have been currently uh, placed in communities is not an acceptable community it's very flammable and uh, there's other communities that have then since stopped those from occurring within their communities until someone comes up with a solution for the uh, fire rating of the product so that became a, a, a concern of the Oakland County Building Officials Association recently uh, due to what happened last winter when several places all of a sudden had them cropping up. But I don't, I don't want to get into any more on that. Um, is there any other commissioner discussion? I, um, Ed? The, the young lady brings up a, a, a point that we can't put the packet on a website prior to the meeting? Most of the time, the whole packet, it, we don't have the capacity, you know, memory capacity, to, to put it on the website. Put it on the website, not with the current server. Yeah. But we there's a notebook on the counter that the packet is in. Yeah, I, I understand. Well, that, that it's, it's I got I want to ask a question in regards to that. Then, Susan, if someone asks for a specific a portion of it, mm -hmm. would they receive it that way? Yeah, we could email it. Yeah. Okay. For the phone call. Okay, that works better. So a resident could request an email of a certain portion of sure. the packet? Sure. Is there any other commissioner discussion? Seeing none, I guess I would look for a motion then to... Uh, uh, based upon the draft zoning ordinance text amendments to add regulations to restaurant use definition categories, special land use regulations, and edit C1 local commercial intent of district provisions is shown as received from the township planner and is reflected in the meeting in the minutes of this meeting i move that the planning commission recommend to the township board approval of the following zoning ordinance amendments article 2 section 2 definitions number 2 article 3 section 4 intent of districts article 3 section 5k schedule of use regulations c1 local commercial and C2, general commercial. Number four, Article 5, use regulations to add Section 35, restaurant, we outdoor cafes, and can't get rid of that fire. Patios. I'll second that motion. Thank you. I lost my stuff, and this is not my doing here. <clears throat> Let me go back after it. Sorry. We have a second. We have a second on the motion. Oh, Jack made the motion. Who's you second? second. Uh, thank you, Jack. I'm trying to find something. It says my license expired on this machine. It's not mine. It's the township's. Um, <laughs> sorry. Discussion on the. Okay, there is no discussion. The motion was roll made. Uh, we need a, no. Is this a roll call? Mm -hmm. is this a roll call vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'd like a roll call vote on the motion, please. Curtis. Yes. Hunwick. Yes. Knopf. Yes. Nold. Yes. Berger. Yes. Motion passed. I can't believe this just happened because I want to pull. I want to pull that. Yeah, plug this in and see what happens real quick. So well, now we just go home and don't. No, go. we're not going to go home. <laughs> this isn't my. This isn't my piece of equipment. Only if we have a motion. That I can second. <laughs> Let's see if it pulls it up. It goes on the other side, probably. Yeah. Um, you know, I think while he's doing that, if we could have the petitioner come up, we're we're uh, we're done with unfinished business, but we're into new business now, which is number ten on our agenda. Ten eight. And if we want to have the petitioner come up and start his preliminary uh, site plan application with us, that would be probably good. Because right now, I don't know what did you did it pull up? Yeah. Oh, good. Go to the next one. Go to the next one. Yeah. Go to the screen that shows the actual plan. Because that's what he's going to start with. Yeah. Right there. That's good. Thank you. You're welcome. There's some color. I have an easel in here. Where's your copy as well? Nice place. Good evening. Uh, I'm Dominic Garrick, the applicant. Um, 
for the enclaves of Woodbridge proposed condominium project. We also have Larry Goss here, the property owner, and uh, associate Carl Monaco, and our project manager, Richard Rizzo. Uh, we're here tonight to present uh, duplex condos on an existing site that was originally zoned for 120 units. Uh, I'm sorry, zoned for 180 units, proposed for 120 units. And we are submitting a site plan for 78 duplex condominiums uh, in the range of 1,500 to approximately 1,900 square feet. Uh, they'll have basements. They'll have first floor master suites. Uh, we'll have walkouts. Um, most of the units are, or half of the units are rather, are located on the golf course. Uh, our intention is to build the project in three phases. Um, and I'm here to answer, hopefully, all your questions. Thank you. Um, we're, we're trying to see if we can just bring the picture up a little larger. We, we have a hard copy up here, but some of the people in the audience might not have it. Um, I'd like to right. zoom to. You should okay. be able to double click on it. Scroll and scroll. We have, we have uh, on mine, I was prepared to kind of go through everything in a chronological order. Um, why don't we start then with the uh, parallel warping groups? Thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Um, our review um, is in the packet there, dated May 2nd. Um, I'll just run through some of our uh, concerns uh, for the commission. Um, this is, uh, yes, on a uh, two parcels that are zoned multiple family residential uh, to the west and south. They're bordered by a, re a recreation district to yeah. the east by multiple family and then to the north. Um, the high school, which is zoned R2, single-family residential. Uh, the site straddles uh, market uh, with 15 two-unit buildings to the north of the road and 24 two-unit buildings to the south. Uh, as a multiple-family uh, proposal, uh, the uh, buildings must conform to the dimensional requirements of the multiple-family residential zoning district. Um, and I will say the applicant just used the word condominium, um, which we, that is one of our concerns, one of our questions is if these are for purchase or for rent. Um, and we were unclear on that um, in the proposal. Um, but uh, as presented, the multiple family residential use um, is uh, subject to, this, to the standards, um, as I said, of the RM district. Um, and it complies to those standards um, with exception to um, one overall dimensional requirement, which is where it borders to the north, the um, high school. Uh, and the ordinance states that the, um, where a uh, multiple family is adjacent to a single family residential, um, whether it's zoned or used, um, it does have an increased um, setback of 100 feet to the property that is zoned or used for single-family residential. And in that area, the applicant is proposing, I believe, 36.9 feet. Um, so it is deficient in that dimension. Uh, additionally, uh, the building spacing that is shown on the site plan uh, shows where the buildings are set 15 feet apart from end to end or side, to, or, excuse me, side to side. Um, and according to section 3.8B, Number five, uh, where buildings are side to side, a minimum separation of 20 feet shall be provided. Uh, so we did find the site plan deficient in that measurement as well. Additionally, uh, when considering the access and circulation of the site, uh, the ordinance states that per section 11.3 uh, C, uh, roadways serving more than 20 lots or units shall have two connections to an adjacent public or private roadway. Uh, and the, the proposal shows a roadway connection planned for the drive to the south where more than 20 units um, are proposed. Um, uh, however, it's shown in three phases on the uh, site plan and there is not currently a roadway that it shows that it will connect to. Um, so we would ask that, there, uh, that the applicant provide more clarification on that um, stub road there and the intentions um, of the connection. Uh, and. Um, 
the requirement that there is a second access point required by the ordinance uh, for the circulation of that side of the development. Um, additionally, per the uh, We also, for access and circulation, we also have a concern about the driveways provided throughout the site. Uh, there wasn't a measurement on the pavement uh, portion of the side yards. So some of the uh, driveways where there is uh, side access, there isn't, um, it isn't shown um, if it is, um, I think 30 feet is what is required. Um, 25. For the turnaround, 25. Yeah. From the garage to the end of the pavement. Right. Um, so that's not shown, so we'd like that to be um, clarified. Um, as well as we do have some concerns about the, the um, two uh, uh, proposed buildings that are on market there as well, um, and as well as the um, units on the um, exit sides onto market from both, both portions, the north and the south. Um, I guess that would be, and I can't see it. The uh, thank you. Yes, lot number two, lot number two, and lot 16. One and 39, yes, uh, but also two and 16 as they're um, as close to Market Street. Um, their distance from Market Street wouldn't allow the I believe it says three car um, distance stacking distance for cars to exit the site. Mm -hmm. um, uh, that would it would that may allow one car. Um, it may it may uh, impede it impede the stacking of one car to to exit the site as well. So we have some questions about that. Um, in addition to that, uh, there were some other things that will be uh, further further addressed through the final site plan that we don't don't really have concerns about right now. Um, Signage, of course, can be submitted to the building department. There, uh, it was not included on the site. Landscape detail for the final site plan, um, and and we defer, of course, um, on-site utilities and stormwater management to Mr. Sharp. And I think that is about it for main concerns. Okay, if that's if that's everything from Lauren at this time, do you, Mr. Sharp, do you want to go into your uh, letter? And I, I read yours earlier, but I can't pull it up on my screen right well, now. Hopefully, so. uh, it's clear. There's a lot going on with this because no. of the uh, you know the previous development with the Burton Casman with the Abbey Ridge Apartments, as far as easements and things like that that are going on. Uh, again, I'll just try to hit some of the high points. Again. Uh, as Lauren had mentioned, you know, are these going to be for sale or for rent units? Um, you know, if they're for sale and it's going to be a condominium, then they'll need to bring master deeds and uh, bylaws and all that stuff back to you for final site plan approval. Um, let's see. Proposed development and adjacent parcels contain several, several previously recorded utility easements. Uh, we would like those easements shown basically to confirm that where they're showing their utilities, matches with what has been previously recorded through either the Abbey Ridge um, easements or for the easements on the now owned school parcel that is to the uh, that would be to the east because there is supposed to be a sanitary sewer extension through there and a water main and I do not believe that the water uh, lines up the sewer may but I do not believe that the water as proposed on phase three of this development lines up with the uh, existing easement that exists on the school property. Um, although it wasn't included in the site plan submittal, uh, there was previously a traffic impact study that was done as part of the overall Sand Hill and Abbey Ridge. They made the improvements on M24 and there wouldn't be any additional requirements uh, to service this on, via Mar on Market Street or on M24. Everything has been satisfactorily addressed there. Um, Jumping into the site grade, uh, site grading, really they didn't submit anything. They're not required to at this point. Uh, we have a general idea of what the plan is going to be from the previous submittals, um, but again, nothing really. Sanitary sewer. All right, <laughs> sanitary sewer is a little, little interesting. Um, with the previous development, we agreed that phase one and generally phase two 
all of that sewage is going to flow out to M24 and we don't have an issue with that. We agreed to that with the exception of, uh, and then once you get to units, I want to say it's around 20 and 32 on this site plan, all of that sewage is supposed to flow easterly through the development across the uh, school property and over to North Oxford Road. So the way that it's shown either basically the phase line from 32 uh, units 32 and 20 needs to be moved slightly because those units are supposed to be in the East Sanitary Sewer District. Um, let's see that's comment 10 comment 11 talks about buildings 20 and 32 and going out and same thing with um, comment number 13 under sanitary sewer proposed sanitary, sanitary sewer must extend to the north property line abutting parcel 04 that's the Abbey Ridge phase 2 just to make sure that everything lines up because uh, again it didn't seem it didn't appear that it was going to with where the recorded easement actually is water distribution there is uh, ample water to service these phases um, it needs to be looped back out though everything that's shown is, is a dead end right now and again maybe mr uh, maybe mr goss will be able to explain that on behalf of burton katzman that they're going to agree to allow these uh, water lines and sewer lines and roadways to you know go loop back out to market street but at this point based on what we saw it's deficient in that manner um, with regards to storm sewer uh, phase one and phase two storm sewer uh, is proposed to be collected in underground piping and directed to uh, basically the detention pond that's on the golf course we have no objections to that everything was uh, previously there were improvements made uh, when Abbey Ridge phase one came in and so that is all um, that is all satisfactory however the proposed storm sewer for phase three it just terminates at the property line I'm assuming that their intent is to continue on to the school property which we would need to see an easement or agreements that they have with the school property to do that but again just you know the water their sewer and their sanitary it's all just kind of stopping at that property line and we need to see what's going on beyond that now, just a quick question and didn't in the previous development phase with Burton Katzman didn't they seek and get those uh, easements through that property to head to the east there is a water easement there is a sewer easement and, and can't we continue with that easement then excuse me in in this development we could still continue to utilize that easement correct? they could and they've actually been relocated since that time when the sale of the property to the schools occurred and we just need that shown on an overall plan okay, I just so that we can make sure, sure that all this is going to work there aren't any problems with us making this happen you know like the storm sewer i mean i Irregardless because I went out of my way to do the research, I believe that there is an easement that was recently put in place okay. with the schools for a stormwater easement. However, it's not supplied in the documents, and so what's been submitted to us, we can't really review it, is the point. All right. That's what I mean. I think that this is all going to be taken care of. I got a good feeling in about the future. it. future. But we need to see it. You okay. know, we need to see how all this stuff sure is, is, is going to be extended okay. and connected to the other future properties. Or across the school property um, I'm gonna jump to the pavement sidewalks and curbing area um, the width of uh, East Market Street isn't shown correctly on there actually the the way that it was was uh, was developed the roadway itself is it's 120 feet wide the right-of-way is and that's what Burton Katzman technically owns as part of the apartments but the roadway easement is only 86 feet so units 1 and 39 are actually going across property that they don't own again maybe easements can be granted or whatever it is but at this point they don't even have access to that roadway for units 1 and 39 because Burton Katzman owns property in between that like little slivers of land so so for clarification then the only thing they have uh, the right to is that where they actually have the ingress and egress approaches going north and south for their actual drive correct so oh so how, what is there seven eight feet there what is it I believe it's a hundred and twenty feet um, is eight. what's shown on the in the deed you know what what Abbey Ridge or Burton Katzman owns 
and the roadway is 86. So do the math, 14, oh. 34, 17 feet on each side, roughly. Wow. So they have to seek and get that from Burton Castle? Correct. Okay. And it might just be an agreement that needs to, that needs to happen. All right. But again, okay. All of this. I'm just trying to make all sure of this needs I'm to just kind of be put in place. Okay. Because right now they don't actually have access okay. to that roadway. I got it. Um, as noted in the fire department review, you know, and, and uh, Lauren mentioned as well, the second means of egress, you know, must be provided for phase three, looping it back around. And uh, let's see, improvements on the easterly end of Cornerstone Drive. Again, that's up in phase three. It kind of extends onto the Burton Katzman uh, property right now. No safety path is required since it doesn't abut a public road. And that's it. So, I mean, all in all, we're supportive of, you know, that it can be done, that all these things can be put together and these agreements can be made and they can show the easements and get everything to line up. But based on what has been provided to us at this point, I have no objections to phases one and two. However, phase three, you know, I would, uh, I, I couldn't offer my support on that, uh, on phase three or on that portion of it. So however you want to put that into your motions or your, you know, your discussion. Um, phase one and two, slam dunks, no problem there, but phase three is kind of messed up. Yeah. Or not, I shouldn't say messed up, just not enough information shown it's at this probably time. probably early for comment, but is it is it due to the fact then that you're concerned about whether we're going to be able to make everything work right with water and sewer and, and all the easements necessary that we need. And, and again, yes, that's it, 100%. I think that it can all work. I mean, I know what the intent of of phase two for Abbey Ridge is going to be, but if phase two of Abbey Ridge doesn't get built, then you're kind of left with what you see right here. You got a dead end road with no cul-de-sac, no hammerhead you know, water mains and sewers not matching up and that type of thing. Right. So it just all needs to kind of be, it's almost like a partnership between those that, two. That might be something the petitioner has to resolve. Right, and they may be able to address that tonight, <laughs> whereas that's, that's kind of what, we're, what I'm hoping for. All right. Um, what well, does that conclude your review right now, Joe? Yes, I guess right on now. behalf of uh, Chief Schultz, because he's not here this evening and as part of his um, letter dated April 15th of 2019, uh, enclaves of Woodbridge, his uh, preliminary review had only about six items and that one was there should be no parking on the hydrant side of the street. I'd like to read this into the record for Mr. Schultz, it's Chief Schultz, P Peter Schultz. Um, and that uh, the cul-de-sac on Bro Brookstone Drive and Hammerhead Turn, turnaround, uh, on Cornerstone Drive meet the uh, fire department's requirements, so that looks like that's good. The hydrant spacing meets all the requirements. Uh, phase three may not be built until the street is finished to provide the second means of egress, so he has a concern there. The street names are all good and acceptable to him, and if there's any questions regarding any of the issues he had, then he gave his name and number and how he can be contacted. Just so that's in the record for the Oxford uh, Fire Department. And in regards to uh, the Township Parks and Recreation, uh, which is from Ron Davis, he has reviewed the preliminary site plan. His letter is dated April 15, 2019. For the enclaves of Woodbridge, dated 4 8 of 19. At this time, the Parks and Recreation Department has no comments, and he's okay with it. And the uh, uh, Lieutenant Scott Patterson from the uh, Sheriff's Office uh, wrote a letter May 1, 2019, <laughs> regarding the enclaves of Woodbridge. Dear sirs, I have reviewed the site plans for the enclaves of Woodbridge and I do not have any recommendations at this time, so he has no concerns over it. And those are the letters from all the different parties that we would have to read into the record and to this um, preliminary site plan review. So I think what we'll do now is ask if uh, the commissioners would like to make any comments regarding what they just heard. Does anyone have anything they want to start with up front? All my questions were addressed by both the planner and the engineer. Thank you. And I guess in regards to that, before we go any further with questioning, I think the petitioner has heard some of the concerns that maybe the planner, the planning consultant, and the engineering uh, consultant addressed what they may have to be, uh, re you know, need resolved. So that now, Meg, do you have any concerns? I do not. John, yourself. 
I have some concerns, but I think they've been covered by the other. By the, the other two parties? Yeah. Mainly the eagle. Go ahead. Yeah, I have this, the same comment. So it, we would be redundant to bring them all back up yeah. again based right. on what the uh, previous consultants have just addressed. Tom, I do have a question. Yes, sir. Regarding phase three, is that something you guys are going to work out? I'm, I'm going to be blunt. Is it, is it something? Yeah, I, I, I kind of wanted to go down a couple of the items. One of the uh, one of the items that was pointed out was the the uh, access to one and thirty nine, which is the road right away. I think when the surveyor uh, surveyed the property, which was going to be sold to us, they put in 120 feet, and maybe that was the original plan. And then when it was dedicated, it was 86 uh, feet. So. That's just a matter of a rededication or you know and resurvey. So I don't think we have uh, issues there. Uh, phase three, we know because we've been in the meetings and we know that, you know there's a lot more work that needs to be done before phase three goes. Our intention is to get phase one going right away, uh, and then phase two, and then phase three. I mean that that's really our goal. So phase three, we're probably looking at maybe two to three years to work out all the engineering details uh, that need to happen and, and obviously we know the comments and we know all those items uh, we're aware of, even before tonight that when phase three goes in there's got to be off-site improvements that need to happen uh, and also we have some more things to work out with the landowner because they own to the east and, and we have to work out agreements as to cost sharing and timing of those improvements uh, so really our focus is to get a preliminary site plan approval uh, and approvals to start phase one. That, that's our goal and intention. Um, and then well, we have a little bit of time on uh, phase three. Uh, the other comment about the phase line, I think it was put in the wrong place between two and three. Our engineer probably got some information uh, and did put the line in the wrong place uh, because our goal was, okay, where do we need to be before we need to get to the phase three uh, items that need to be addressed so that definitely can be sure. uh, adjusted in terms of that um, is that the engineer any other engineering comments that we need to address just a letter I guess if you're well no, they're more they're more like no not really site the more engineering design more engineering design yeah. and things like that that needs that to be worked I, I don't out think we need to get into here right now and I think based on the letter you can kind of see where we're going. I would like to see some sort of a drawing that does show the easements that are recorded and your utilities that are being proposed so that I can see that they all match up with each other. Yeah, we'll work with the uh, landowner because the, that's the balance of his property, uh, which right. we don't have under contract. Yeah, so I, th I think that by doing that, that, that would alleviate, you know, at least half of the comments that we have right okay. here as to what's going on. Jack, if if preliminary site plan is given for phase one and two, they'll have to come back for phase three if we don't address that tonight, right? Yeah, and my my biggest thing for me is, you know, for ingress and egress with more than twenty lots, is there a way that they could show uh, a future roadway, a future? It's to, to make sure we have provided easements to come back out to Market Street. For three? On, yeah. Is that, is that even feasible? I mean, mentally, we all know that you're stubbed right now to continue that roadway back I up. I think it's designed to loop around, but I would I'd leave that answer to the uh, Well, I think from owner. the Planning Commission's point of view, and I guess what I'll say when I mean more of that from me, I guess from my point of view, um, I'm... I'm reluctant to grant. A, I mean, I'm I'm real. I'm excited about the development. I'm good with that. Uh, but I'm reluctant to grant um, any kind of variance and differences when I don't get my points of ingress and egress kind of guaranteed to me. So I'd want to see something that tells me in the future that we aren't going to have difficulty if that road, if phase three never takes off. Say, if it never, if phase three is. I believe phase three is going to be subject to a lot of things. Yeah. So, uh, it, well, right, but I want to make sure that I'm going to have a uh, second. I'm going to, I want that loop on that roadway. Well, is that addressed in final engineering? Because a lot of communities say these are this is preliminary site plan approval, but these items you will not get your approvals and permits to move forward in final engineering until all these items are addressed. 
So is that a way that we can handle it for phase three? Jim, are you are you saying that's a way we can handle it? What's that? I, I mean, I just like assurance that I'm going to get my roadway. When you're How do I make that? How do I make that assurance? See what I mean? I, I agree. Because I, I mean, believe in the, in all the comments, it says you need from your fire chief, from your engineer, you need easements and you need access and turning points and, you'll, and, and, and we you'll understand that and, and we provide understand that, that and we have final. to work with the landowner uh, on that okay. uh, but we would like to get a preliminary site plan approval and then we can we can design our engineering per phase and, and obviously uh, with that condition on phase three you're not going to get approval we're not going to get approval for engineering to move forward until all those conditions have been met and does that mean all the concerns that people had including the setback differences between well the, the setback yeah, I'll get to the setback issues uh, After I'm, just, I'm just dealing with the engineering okay. issue right now all right can I also say regarding the road way and phase three that if phase three was taken off the table right now to move forward with phase one and two the roadway would need to be approved be able to be would need to be be able to be approved as a standalone development roadway. right yeah so there would kind of what I'm trying to get to cul-de-sac Turnaround. But he said he could address that at final engineering. They could put in a temporary cul de sac and then just pull it out later right. on. Right. Here's how my thoughts you're looking to start one, you're looking to get approval for two. If you get one and two approved on a preliminary site plan, you're going to have to work out that ingress and egress for the second entrance. But temporarily, you would put a cul de sac because it's under 20 units in phase two. Correct. So your drawing would then final would be temporary cul-de-sac phase three to close. I'm not telling you how to do this, but no, one of the conditions uh, that we would make in our motion is to include all the uh, unresolved issues in the planner's letter and the engineer's letter. If you want to move forward with it, you're going to have to come back here and say, okay, number th at final, we're going to put a cul-de-sac in there instead of putting three in now. You work out your easement agreements with Goff and Burton, and then you can do three later. We're totally fine with that. Yeah, I think our focus is on phase one right now. We'd like to see if we can push and even get that in this year, and then depending on sales, phase two next year, and then. On the far east side of Market Street, if you drive the site, I was there today. They have some natural driveways set up for the second and third egress. Is that something that's intended to be used? As Cut, cut away to existing Curb cuts in that. Past the clubhouse? Yes. That would be, I'd, I'd leave that to the landowner. That's his area. Larry, you can answer it. Hi. Good evening. Larry Goss, a partner with Burton Katzman. Uh, those were uh, put there as part of the overall site plan that you had approved way back when. Yeah. Um, so that's still the game plan. And just a quick comment on that. We, we're very excited about this part of the project getting off the ground. It's a as you can see, a fabulous looking uh, part of what, what's going on here. So we were, we're gonna be cooperative with any and all easements that they need to satisfy the planning commission and engineering. So we're working on this together. Well, what's your first name again? I'm sorry. Dominic. Dominic, thank you. Should have known better. Um, for phase two, I mean, is there some? Is there a temporary cul-de-sac or something that could be put in? Absolutely. You, so that's what we you do would that on all our projects that we're. So then we could get phase one and phase two, and yep. and okay. So then you did answer it pretty much yep. what I'm looking for. So now the planner I think. Has some yeah, I, I just want to address one at a time. So yep. if the yep. engineer, we can. I can live with that part okay. of it then. Okay. okay. Uh, the planner's comments. Um, Let's start with the setbacks. Uh, in typically, in these type of developments, we've done quite a few. Uh, 15 feet is pretty standard with setbacks. It, it's pretty much standard in most residential communities, 15 feet between homes. And this, in essence, is, is about an S, a duplex is 1,500 square foot, like a 3,000 foot home. So we find that 15 feet is usually allowed. And, and it's, most of the communities, we do it through a PUD. And it's one of the exceptions allowed in the PUD. This isn't a PUD, so would have to go right. through the ZBA. No, no so agreement. the reason we have the 15 feet is, we're, instead of just putting all driveways down the street, we tried to mix it up 
and put a few side entrance garages. It gives you a little bit of, you know, instead of just a garage all the way down the street. So in doing that, we, we need a little bit more side yard. So like I said, in standard, in most communities, 15 feet is, is um, allowed. And we have on the side turn, we have 25 feet of drive and we have 30 feet in between the units. Uh, that's pretty much a standard as well. So can we get to the 20 feet? Yes, but we would have to then take out all the side entrance or lose uh, units. Um, so we're hoping to uh, seek a variance uh, on that and leave it at 15 feet as the plan shows. Uh, and the other issue, as the planner has indicated, is the uh, this unit here because this is a residential zoned area, the, the ordinance calls for a 100-foot buffer as opposed to uh, normal is 35, 40-foot uh, rear yard setbacks. It is, I don't know if it, it was rezoned, it is the high school property, so I don't know if there would any, be any, uh, I mean, we're backing up to a ball field, you know, we're at 36, 37 feet. Uh, again, if we don't, we lose a unit, we're not backing up to another dwelling, so we would ask to seek a variance on, on that matter as well at the same time. I believe those are the only two variances. Is there any other that I missed? Yeah, there's a, typically it's 40 feet. We're at 36.9, but because it's a, a residential to a multifamily, it calls out 100 foot. So that's the the one when I first looked at the plan, Dominic, I was a little opposed on that variance. But then when I went back and looked at the property, there's some elevation changes there that um, would even be something that I would maybe be more concerned about granting something in, a, in regards to a variance if, if the variance board was willing to do that. We don't do that from the planning commission level because we're not using a PUD, so we don't have Correct. those agreement terms. But um, when I looked at the elevation changes, then I I'm a little more acceptable to that part of that variance. Um, I'm not really opposed to uh, maybe getting the distance between the buildings if you had to go to front entrance garages because your views are very attractive on your front inch garage uh, format um, with your buildings. So if you could get your building spacing a little better and still went with front end entrance garages, I'd still be okay. I mean, that would be more suitable that, to me. That's really a preference of, of what you want the community to look like because we can achieve I believe the same amount of units I'm very we happy with the front. units that are on Stony Lake Drive I think they've been attractive and very good uh, neighbors in the community with us okay and they're all front entrance garages and I, it, they've done very well and I think this development could do very well with front entrance if you could get a little better distance between buildings I that's me talking again as a planning commission member um, well, I we've looked at it. I think we even that. looked at it again this morning, and I, I believe, right, Rich, we looked at it that with 20 foot spacing, if that's what uh, is required and, and recommended, uh, if we took out the side entrances, you, we and would only be able because to, to set a precedence in regards to that and future development activity in the township, I don't like to open up that can of worms. Uh, down the road with with other people, not including just yourselves. But uh, well, most most of the side yard in multifamily is done because the buildings are huge you know you're dealing with a I sixplex or twelveplex or something. and yeah, and so you, you you have that 20 foot and we understand but this is in essence is is basically a residential building and I think even under your residential um, one of the zonings you allow pretty much 15 feet so it's a standard that we use in other communities but again with the preferences the look of uh, if you don't mind the front entrance we can achieve the 20 feet and i believe the same amount of units then then the decision I mean, is do I'm, we I'm go for a variance first of all you reduce the number of units down on the property compared to what was there before correct from the original design criteria 120 to 78. yeah i'm that's ex that's great i mean that takes you know some of the traffic and everything else and you know seven trips per day per household and all that count so i'm 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 aware of all that, and I'm really grateful that you came in with this type of plan. I think duplexes would be great units in there. Um, I just want to get the separation point more in line with what the township ordinance is, because it is a site plan. Mm -hmm. It's site condos, technically, not a PUD. So um, I'd be a little more 
I wasn't in the beginning, but I'm a little more on the variance request on the uh, setback to the north. Okay. But maybe the building spacing. And then if you get the engineering issues resolved and the other concerns from the planner resolved in regards to this, I'd, I guess I'd be, unless other commissioners have other concerns we haven't heard, we'll wait and see what, if we're ready for a motion for preliminary approval. The other, the other concern that I have that needs to be addressed is that is the, um, the, Spacing requirements for um, cars waiting. There must be sufficient on site storage to accommodate at least three cubed vehicles waiting to park or exit without using a portion of the public right of way, obstructing, obstructing existing vehicle site distance or otherwise inter interfering with street traffic, um, which is the cars waiting to leave the site and, and to um, enter onto Market Street. But the Planning Commission can provide a waiver for that. We just need to provide the waiver. Well, yeah, but you're talking about how many people stack up at one time, and maybe it's in the morning when they're trying to get out to go to work or something like that, or right, you know, it's at peak at peak times or something like that. And I'm thinking, yeah. you know, looking at sight distance down the road and what comes in through this way, and then what's coming in off of 24. Uh, we don't even know what'll happen there yet until some of those other properties develop. I I could waver on that. I mean, personally myself. Because of the reduction in the number of units, I don't think the traffic flow is going to be anywhere near what could have been on this property by what's allowed by ordinance. And, and so if I can comment too, if we take off the side yard that buys 25 feet right. extra at those entrances. Right. But that's through the, the if we go to front through, entrance. Through the owner, right? To get that. Well, it, it, yeah. This is the side, this right. is the side, and I think that's their concern as you right. Yeah. Out. If it became if this driveway over is 25 feet. so it moves it moves even for an additional space right right Same. but I could wave around part of that anyway date you know based on the traffic it's really just on lot 16 and 2 also as people are exiting yeah. the site yeah the three the three lots in combination are 38 16 they and they 2 put front garages on the right. yeah would, would, would you be still opposed then for the side on 15 and 38 coming in Oh, down the street? Okay. And if we can achieve the 20 feet, you don't have a problem with the side entrance? No. The 25 and the 30 absolutely foot? Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah. If we'll you work. can achieve it, absolutely not. We'll work on that. Okay. Uh, I, I think in some instances with the curves, we can still achieve that. Ed, are, are we looking to have the preliminary site plan approved administratively with the planner and the two consultants? If they meet the the requirements that we're uh, pursuing here. I think if they can amend this plan and bring it back to us, so we're going to bring it back here. Um, that I guess, Lauren, let's comment on that right yeah. now. Yeah, so you're talking about the process of how we move yeah. forward. Yeah. So um, because it's preliminary, um, they will come back with a final site plan, anyways. Yeah. They have to. So you could approve it preliminarily. So you can approve it preliminarily and uh, make it conditional upon the um, compliance with the engineer and the planner's reviews. And then when they come back with changes, they can come to us directly and we can administratively make sure that they're in compliance. That's what it is. And move into the final That's without coming That's back to planning. Well, then they wouldn't have to come to us. They could just come back with their final. With the final, exactly. Right. Yeah. That saves everybody a little bit of time. That's good. I yeah. don't mind. This preliminary tonight is one and two, right? Yeah, that's it. Okay, I, I don't see. <laughs> phase one and phase two, that's it. Yeah, I, I, I guess however you choose to. I mean, you can put a preliminary plan with conditions on engineering on phase three. I'd, I'd want to see him come back. I'd want to see him come back for phase back. three. Well, phase three, right. So that means that their amended site plan coming to us will remove three. It will only have one and two on it. Yeah. Right. When yeah, that's what I understand. He, he said he could put a temporary cul-de-sac in there if he had to to get people back out. Yeah. I'm, that's, I'm good with that. Yeah. I, I, right. I'm for that's moving good. forward. Okay. I'm ready. Oh, boy. You ready? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a so different Take moment. good notes. I'll give you a copy. I move that the Planning Commission approve the preliminary site plan for the enclaves at Woodbridge Park. Phases one and two, parcels number 04 22 
4-200-023 and 04-22-200-025 zoned RM multiple family residential applicant Woodbridge of Oxford LLC. This recommendation of approval for phases one and two is based on the following findings. The Planning Commission granting a waiver for section 8.3 C.2 sufficient on-site storage for vehicles waiting to park or exit. Any unresolved uh, items contained in the Township Planners Review dated May 2nd, 2019. Any unresolved items contained in the Township Engineers Review dated April 30th, 2019. And any unresolved items contained in the Oxford Fire Department letter dated April 15th, 2019. And the motion. Leave it out. Is there for, is there? I'll, I'll second. Okay, I, I have a motion with conditions from Mr. Curtis and I have a second from Mr. Nold. Is there any discussion from the Planning Commission members on the motion? I was trying to. Did, did you include the, the could be uh, approved administratively? Don't. You don't. Yeah, I don't you don't have to call it, it out. That's you don't it. have to. You no. Know. Okay. Because he said in regards to both those letters from okay. those. Right. Uh, They'll have to submit to comply. All right. Right. They'll have to resubmit. Yeah. Does everybody understand the motion? Do we need a roll call? We'll need a roll call, Susan. Noth? Yes. Noel? Yes. Curtis? Yes. Hunwick? Yes. Berger? Yes. Motion passed. Yeah, good. I'm, I'm glad. Bring Thank us you. forward. Thank you very much. We look forward to building it. I think there's a need in the community for duplexes. Um, I think they could do well here. I, I right. think they will. It's a great site, great... Uh, you got a great community here, and well, it's less impact on what we had originally going in there. Absolutely, so we took and reduced the numbers down by several, and uh, with a duplex component, I think it'd be great. So I'm forward. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. Uh, seeing, uh, are there any communications from any other committees? Uh, our economic development committee do we have any communications there no we haven't met we're gonna set something up probably in June well I can't get uh, can't get everybody together no okay we're gonna have to change the date or something because it's getting harder and harder with summer coming now the ordinance review committee um, is working and moving forward uh, with with other issues right now and one of them is food truck vending, and which we're not as concerned about as we were in the beginning. But we we have some other. We're following the list that was pretty much given to us from the uh, townships board's direction from day one. So we're getting back on track. We might get sub. We might get li lined up with something else here in the future, just because of what happened at the previous board meeting, from what I just heard. So. Um, but we are on track and we're moving forward in the right direction to get some of these other things in place with the right amendments and we're going to have uh, continue and we have our meetings accordingly john you want to talk about zoning board of appeals there have been no meetings this year are there any other comments from any of the planner or engineer this evening lauren no comments mr sharp nothing further well seeing none then i think we have an adjournment I'll second that Okay. We don't need a motion to adjourn. Nope.